everybody welcome back to our channel so you want to start using studio lights but you only have one and that's okay because for today's video i will be showing you how you can utilize your one light setup so when i started using studio lights i only had one during that time so it's kind of limiting and i have to be creative so during that time i learned inverse square law so in its simplest form inverse square law means that the further the light travels the, it loses strength exponentially because of the wider area it has to cover so basically twice the distance is equals to one fourth and three times the distance will equal to one ninth <laughs> so now i'm gonna show you three different light setup with just one light and how you can use inverse square law in your photos because that's gonna be your best friend so for today's photos, I'm going to be using my Godox DP403 right here. It's quite powerful, much powerful than the first one I've been using. It's the Godox MS300. And I'm using a foldable beauty dish. This is 100, 100 centimeters big. But you can use any softbox you like. So you can use a smaller version. So this is 60 centimeters. You can also use a 120 by 80. That's the one I have. Or just an umbrella like this one very simple umbrella but you need to remember that the bigger it is the softer the light will be and if you don't have a strobe you can use a simple flush just like this one i have this one for about six years now and it's still working until now the camera i will be using for today is my sony a7r 3a and the lens is the samyang 50 millimeter f1.4 mark ii and if you're using off-camera flash or strobe, you need to control them and you will be needing a transmitter for that. So right now Godox have three transmitters which are all working great, but I just like this one specifically because it has a big screen and for me it's easier to use. This is the Godox X-Pro S. Now I'm gonna adjust the light. So I had to switch off one of our video lights so I can see the light coming on his face. That's why it is nice to have a model light so you'll know where exactly the light is hitting. So, oh my God, it's heavy. <laughs> so since we have white walls, I'm gonna be using a reflector, but not the reflective side, but the dark side. So it won't bounce any light. I'm just using a monopod for it with a phone holder. <laughs> Whatever works, you know. <laughs> so now my light is at the correct spot and I have raised my, <laughs> what are you doing? I have raised <laughs> my flash power to one more stop. It's not 1 16th and my model is getting ready, obviously. Ready? No hands. Yeah, but the mustache. Oh, the mustache. Moustache. <laughs> Alright. Okay, to view it. Alright, now we've achieved Rembrandt lighting. It has this triangular shaped light on well, my model's face. But the backdrop is a bit too bright for my taste. So later on in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to work on that. So now we're going to go on the next one, which is going to be the split lighting. So with split lighting, hint is in the name, one side is lighter and the other one is on the dark side. If you only knew the power of the dark side. I'm gonna move it a bit low and then raise it a bit straight. Oh, what did I just do? I don't know. What did I do? Okay, so it's pretty straightforward. You just have to put the light on this side. And I was gonna go on that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> It's very really straightforward. <laughs> Just put the light on this side. And again, I'm using my reflector, not the reflective side, but the, the dark side. If you only knew <laughs> Stop it now. <laughs> With this kind of lighting, since it's very dramatic because of the shadow it creates, I like it with a bigger depth of field. So my setting is now at F8 and I need to compensate all that on my light. So my light setting is now at 1.8 power. Ooh, here we go. Yeah, that's the split lighting. I think this is gonna be really good when you edit this at black and white because it's literally light and shadow. 
So let's go on the next one, which is gonna be the last example of many things you can do with one light setup. It's going to be the butterfly lighting. Now we're gonna do butterfly lighting. So it got its name because it has this characteristic of a butterfly shape under the nose and it's really nice for beauty shots because it also accentuates the shapes of our cheekbone and the shadowing under our chin. <laughs> I won't see anything with all this bush. Let's <laughs> go. Yeah, okay, I'll sit then. So the way you set up your light is it has to be 45 degrees up your model's face to achieve that shadowing under the nose and this would be good if you have a C stand but if you have like a basic stand like what we have here that's fine as well so it's gonna <laughs> oh no don't kill me <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Since butterfly lighting is kind of one dimensional, so it is nice to shoot at wide open. So we will be shooting at f1.4 and even though Godox DP400 Mark III can go down to 164, it's still a bit too powerful because it's 400 watts. So to combat that, we are going to be using an ND8 filter. So this one is going to reduce your light to three stops, which will equal it to like shooting at f4. Right, since he has a mustache, you won't really see much the butterfly is shadowing and he has a big bush beard here. And me having a flat face <laughs> and a flat nose, the butterfly is not there. But the positioning is, is correct, the setting is correct, so just trust me, I'm a photographer. <laughs> you can see a butterfly in there, maybe a caterpillar uh, this time. Uh, butterfly that someone stepped on. <laughs> It, it hasn't hatched yet. It's still a caterpillar, but yeah, it's, it's there. <laughs> so those are the three most popular lighting that you can use with just one light. And remember when I did the Rembrandt lighting and I said that the backdrop was a bit too bright. So now I'm going to show you how you can use inverse square law. So now the distance between my backdrop and my light is twice the distance of my subject to the light. So let's say at correct exposure, Peter is at 100%, which will mean that the backdrop will get at least one fourth of the light and that's gonna equal to 25%. So I'm gonna take a shot to show you the difference and then we are going to correct that after. <laughs> it is okay, all right. So now we see that Peter is at correct exposure, but the backdrop is a bit too bright. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to move both my subject and my light a bit further to retain the same subject to light distance. But this time, my backdrop is going to be three times further. So that's going to be like one ninth which is gonna equal to 11%. The backdrop will get 11% of the light. All right, so now we've moved Peter and the light. So I'm gonna take a shot and see the comparison. And there we go. Now the backdrop is getting less light, but what if you want it more dark, but you don't have any more space to move to, so. So now I put back my light in its original position from the first shot. So instead of changing my backdrop to light distance, I am decreasing my subject to light distance. <laughs> and because of this, I have to compensate with my flash power. So I'm gonna be from 132 to 164. And one quick tip, every time you lower your flash power, just trigger it because it's already been preloaded. So you will think that, oh, why is this overexposed? But it's not because it was at the higher power before. So as you can see, I'm still able to achieve a darker backdrop, but there's a slight difference because now my light is closer to my subject. The distance between his forehead to the light is relatively closer than the distance of the light to his chin. And because of inverse square law, there's a bigger light fall off. <music> 
so that's it as you can see even if you only have one light there's a lot of possibilities with just changing its positions you can create different styles and with playing with distances and learning in the square law you can have a control over your depth of light so i hope you guys enjoyed this video and next time we're coming back with two light setup and don't forget to smash the like button and hit subscribe and see you on the next one <laughs> it's good, yeah. You forgot to switch it off. <laughs>